besides uh, mistiming the ball contact, there's a very another very common source of error, and that is hitting the ball. You know, hitting the ball, having at contact right in the contact zone, hitting the ball with the shoulders rotating. The reason that's a source of error is that if your so shoulders are rapidly rotating as you're, as you're hitting the ball, that shoulder is pulling your arm, uh, it's, it's pulling it around in a circle, and instead of having the simple swing set type of a motion, where it's just a very simple motion, you've got a stable pivot, and you're swinging your arm, you've got this pivot swinging around like this, and you're trying to have a simple motion like this, a simple pendulum motion, but you can't do it because your shoulders are twisting. Now you'll say, hey, I watch pros on TV playing tennis. They swing the shoulders. And you know, you're, you're correct, and there's a hole in that assertion. Hole in the assertion is that if you slow mo, super slow mo, or if you look a frame at a time, you'll find that there are their shoulders are swinging around during the stroke, but there's a brief moment in the middle of the stroke where the shoulders slow down or stop, and then they rotate, they pick up speed and rotate again. And where that happens is at call, at ball contact. So they, they go and they they, they they torque their shoulders back to, to get. To, be able to get some acceleration of their, you know, that torquing the, sh the shoulders around helps accelerate the, the arm around. But just before contact, their their hitting shoulder slows or stops. So it slows or stops, and then as they follow through toward the end of the follow through, it starts up again and finishes the swing around. So how did they do that? It turns out it's, there's a very simple way to do it. It's called counter rotation. Uh, you see them take the racket back and then they'll take, for example, on a forehand, they'll take their, their left arm and they'll, they'll move it away from the, you know, they'll take the racket, racket back or the paddle back, they'll now separate out their right arm, and then when they go to stroke, they start off by s turning their, their shoulders around, and as they approach contact, they pull in their non-dominant arm, their left arm of your right hand, and that, that pulling in slows the body and, or stops it. If they're really good, it stops it. And then right at the contact zone, they've got this really simple pendulum. So very, very smooth, easy, simple stroke at contact. After you've hit the ball, it doesn't matter what you do. And so then your shoulders moving up, moving again, are of no consequence. So that's what they do. Same thing on the back end. Back end, they take, the, take the paddle back or they rack it back. Right, and they'll start swinging around, swing their shoulders around, and right near contact, they take that non-dominant arm and they'll fling it out the other way. So, so they'll basically they'll start, they'll take the right back, they'll start forward, and then at contact, they do that, and then after contact, that happens. So that's called counter rotation because on the forehand. This arm going this way is countered by this arm going this way. So you got a rotation around this direction with that arm, you got a rotation around this direction with that arm. So essentially, you know, with forehand, you know, you take the paddle back, let go, and then you give yourself a hug at contact. I love myself. I love my I love my stroke. And that keeps that shoulder steady. So uh, the same thing is true, but in the opposite order of the backhand. Take, you know, take, take the paddle back, and then you start rotating around, and then you say, I love the world, I love tennis, or I love pickleball. So with the backhand, take the paddle back, start your, your arms moving around, and then just before contact, open. So start loving yourself, and then I love pickleball. So now I'm not really paying attention to these. If you look at it and say, hey, you're not swinging your paddle right. No, I'm just, I'm really paying attention to this and this. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing with the paddle. You might notice I'm not doing the precise uh, stroke I told you about. Uh, okay, so that's counter rotation. So the spinning of the shoulders 
uh, is okay unless you're near contact. And in that point in time, you use counter rotation either one way or the other to slow or stop that shoulder so you got the simplest possible motion and stroke at that at contact, which is where it matters. Doesn't matter so much at the beginning or at the end, but at contact, in and around contact, in that contact zone, you want the simplest possible stroke so that you're not trying to calculate, your brain isn't trying to calculate your shoulder turn around and this, you know, and having to kind of swing out away from that because the shoulder's pulling away and so you got to throw the paddle out a little further to make, to keep that going in a straight line. So really that's the purpose of it. So that's another source of error. It's moving these shoulders around while making contact. Something that helps with that, and if you want to see a good role model for this, check out Federer. Federer does this better than anybody I've ever seen. I watched like a hundred, I just picked a random video of his, super slow-mo, of him hit a hundred shots, forehands and backhands, and every single shot he did the same thing. So what he did was, he watched the ball come in, so he's got the, you know, he's got the, he's got his, uh, takes his racket back, he watches the ball come in, and he watches the ball contact his racket, and then as he's following through, he keeps his eyes where the ball contacted his racket. He does that every single time. You see him hit 100, 100 shots, he goes like, here, here comes the ball in, contact, and he's still looking down. Same thing on back end. Here comes the ball in, contact, still looking down. So he's at the end of his follow through, and he's still looking where he made ball contact. The reason he does that, the reason it's so important and why you should too, is that if you look up, it very typically causes a shoulder turn. So if you're stroking and you look up, you know, you're stroking and then you look up, I mean, if I look up, see that shoulder turn there? So you don't want that to happen in a contact. The way he keeps that from happening is he does this. And by not looking up, he doesn't turn the shoulder with a look up. Uh, I've talked about not the shoulders not twisting, but I did mention that there is something that the shoulder can do that's okay in terms of move. The shoulder can move forward because that's, you know, you're hitting the ball. That helps. That adds a little velocity to the ball. And the shoulder can move up. So if you get bend your knees on a low ball and hit and come up, it's okay to go up. That's still, in terms of a simple pendulum motion, it still makes for a sim sim simple pendulum. If you look at it from this side, coming up and forward, you know, that's not affecting the swing. So, be like Federer, if you want to be good, that's, that's the best. That's sort of one of my current things I'm working on. <laughs> I, uh, I like most everybody else, you know, it's like, okay, let me, I'll try that. Uh, okay, I did it, okay, oh, I'm, not, I'm hitting well now, now I can look up, you know. Oh, oh crap, bad shot. So, uh, just be religious about it, just every time you hit it, Hit it, do that, and look up a half second to a second later. Now, how, how quick do you look up? Uh, if you're hitting a fairly slow ball, if you hit it, you know, so you're not trying to hit it, hit it uh, fast, you got a ton of time before the ball gets to the side and your opponent hits it. You got a full second, so you can take your time, hit it, and then look up after a second. If you hit a really hard ball, you know, maybe a half second look up. Probably not going to get over to your opponent in less than a half second. So, uh, you might say, well, why don't I make it a quarter second or maybe a tenth of a second? Problem with that is if you make it a tenth of a second, you get what's called creep. Okay, two tenths of a second, one tenth of a second. Next thing you know, you're, you're, you're looking up before you hit it. So, it's key to allow it just enough time. You absolutely know, okay, I'm definitely done. Now I look up. Half second to a second is, is a good amount of time. Just watch better. Watch him hit some in real time and you know find a video that's not super slow. Mo and see how long he waits before he looks up. Guarantee his timing is good for you. <laughs> He's, it's good for him. You know how well he plays. That's a good good amount of time.
And don't worry that he's a mutant. That, no, he's, he, he can do it because he's a mutant. Nope. It's what makes him look more like a mutant than he actually is. He's actually a human being. He just played a lot. He loves the game. And he knows what he's doing. He's researched it. His coaches have helped him. And he's hitting uh, strokes that have minimum built-in error.